Okay, well, we're here to do another uh, short lecture on uh, today's topic for criminal justice is CIPTED. That's C P T E D. CIPTED. CIPTED. Okay, so what does it really mean? It's crime prevention. Through, and I'm just going to skip that part, technology and environmental design. Okay, once again, SIP 10. Okay, crime prevention through, just put a little short through here. Through environmental crime prevention through oh crap sorry sorry wrong 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 crime prevention through technology and that's how it goes crime prevention through technology and environmental design so uh, I hope you're getting a point here that I'm trying to get across so what do we mean by this well, uh, article by Robert A. Gardner, uh, who um, uh, submitted it through www.crimewise.com library siped.html. If you're interested, um, talks quite a bit about the background of this. One thing is this term was actually uh, created by a guy named, by the name of uh, Ray Jeffries. He has now just recently passed away. I think it's like this. And uh, so it's one of his things that he came up with. A lot of the origination of it was in order to help HUD with uh, uh, these large scale projects where they had low cost housing. There's a lot of problems with crime and criminality. Uh, and so what they try to do is come in and create uh, different zones and so forth. Uh, some important aspects, lighting, you know, where is lighting? Lighting needs to be very prominent. There needs to be a lot of it. So you have to have, you know, a lot of lights, for instance, in a parking lot. Uh, you also, there has to be um, other consideration like barriers between certain areas. There are what they call public zones, public zones. And that's just like a park or whatever, you know, green spaces. Uh, and then there's the semi-private zones. And these are kind of where you go from one thing to another. Uh, but so what you're going to see is some uh, buffering. Uh, and so you're starting to see maybe landscaping or something where it's trying to slow people down. Uh, and then when you get into like private zones, private zones are restricted. Uh, this would be like a gated community. Uh, you're going to have cameras, you're going to have patrols. Uh, you know, police are going to be patrolling uh, through quite a bit. Uh, sometimes uh, some of this uh, territoriality is a perception. It's not uh, absolute, but in other ways it, it can be. Now, a real good example of this that I learned about recently, which is something that the FBI uh, really sees as important, is chain link fence, for example, versus a wooden fence. Why would you choose a uh, chain link fence versus a wooden fence? Well, here because it's the visibility. Uh, you know, in this day and age, you can actually have cameras trained uh, right on that fence on all different sides and you can see people coming and going through the fence so that's really important uh, is that the chain link gives you better visibility so that if there is uh, potential uh, for crime then chances are uh, a smart uh, predator for example will not come up to the chain link fence whereas they might kind of like sneak around uh, behind or in between like with a wooden fence. So chain link is much preferable uh, because of the high visibility so that it can protect uh, you from uh, prevent or in other words basically prevents crimes you know by keeping uh, uh, 
the visibility security in, in good stead. Uh, okay, another thing to keep in mind is um, when we look at windows, uh, minimal visual obstruction, same type theory, okay? So I've talked about this. Uh, you see these nice buildings nowadays that are being built, you know, I call them like big box stores, and they all have windows like this. Uh, Hardee's, McDonald's, Subway, uh, CVS, you know, they all have uh, nice uh, big windows. Uh, so you police can easily drive by and look in the window and see everything's okay. But what, what have they been doing? Uh, I've noticed this especially like Taco Bell. They've got these huge signs on here. You know, wow, you know, buy from us, you know, trying to appeal to people. Well, what's that doing? That is limiting visibility and it is increasing the potential for crime. So limiting visibility, okay, so that you get your visibility goes down, okay, limiting vis, so then crime goes up, okay, so you don't want that, okay, you want it the other way around, so the best way to do that is to, you know, avoid situations like this where we have, uh, you know, windows that are blocked, you want the windows to be uh, nice and open. Another example of these old, old liquor stores that you see. There's no lights out here, okay? Uh, and everything here is covered up. I've even seen them put like plywood or what they call T111 on the, over the windows for whatever reason. Or they'll stack beer clear to the ceiling, you know, in big cases like this. And so it's impossible for the police to see what's going on in there. Uh, makes you wonder what is going on in there. Uh, so, you know, you see like Save on Liquor, for example. Uh, they look terrible, you know, they're not appealing, uh, and uh, the visibility's bad, and so what do we have? We have more crime. You have more robberies in liquor stores than you do in some other places because of the uh, issue with the visibility. At least that's the theory. So crime prevention through technology, which could be cameras, lights, uh, this type thing, or environmental design. Environmental design, chain link fence, lots of windows, open where people can see, not blocked. Cash register toward the front, where it's next to the window, where people can see. So here again, we're going to draw a floor plan up here in a minute. Fiscal security patrols, prevention by police, it goes hand in hand with good visibility uh, and this type thing, so that's very important. So let me give you an example of a floor plan, okay? So here you got a liquor store and your cash register is clear back here and then you got boxes and boxes of beer stacked all the way to the ceiling, you know, all the way across here and of course no windows. These are all blocked off by plywood. Uh, so nobody can see, here's the cash register. Well, who's going to even know if the guy gets uh, shot dead, you know? And if you do have security cameras inside, well, that's all well and good, but sometimes that's, that's too late, you know? Uh, I've even seen security cameras like that. So, you know, entryways here, uh, you know, maybe a restroom back here. Uh, and so it's in a position where, you know, you can't see very well. Well, the better plan is to, uh, like I said, put everything up toward the front as far as the cash register. And you want to put it up high, too. Put it up on an island, okay? So you got your cash register in here, and all your products are kind of like back in here. Cameras all over, so you keep an eye on things. And lots of windows, lots of windows. So the police can drive around the parking lot, Plenty of lighting, you know, lots of light, we want light, uh, you know, and that's more than one place, okay? And you know, think about this. Remember the invention of the light bulb? Well, no, I know you don't remember because you weren't there, but uh, Wabash, Indiana, supposedly the first electrically lighted city. Well, what they did, they attached like four great big lights on the top of the courthouse and they shone all over the downtown, which is like minuscule, tiny. Uh, so that's how they got that award. But anyway, 
uh, main point of this is that, uh, you know, when lighting came into vogue, this would have been in the 1930s, there are arguments that are made in this septed theory that uh, basically what happened was crime dropped uh, dramatically in the area of burglaries, in the area of robberies, things like that, because there was good lighting at night and places where uh, stores were open. So that's an important consideration is the septed. Always keep that in mind. Uh, next time you're out in your car or you're walking or driving, whatever you're doing, uh, look at the different stores and stuff and try to make a mental note about, you know, would that be good septed for that particular store? In other words, you see maybe a brand new nice looking store, lots of windows and stuff, but they're all blocked by sales uh, literature, big posters, you know. Uh, go to a movie theater, what do you see? Well, movie picture all over, you know, uh, it's all blocked by these posters and stuff. And that's not really good uh, from the standpoint of crime prevention. So you can look at some other ones where it's really clean, they've really done a good job, lots of lighting, uh, visibility is really good from the street, uh, you know, a number of these different things, and that is much better, theoretically at least, uh, and it uh, proves out basically with the statistics too uh, that you have better security uh, that is what we call crime prevention so hey hope you enjoyed this this is just another thing that we're going through uh, we'll work on this some more in class but uh, just wanted to let you know uh, that this is a topic that bears more investigation uh, something new uh, and something that we could research so uh, give us a look uh, tell me your thoughts on it later on the discussion uh, and maybe in your papers uh, and uh, and we'll go from there plan on seeing a few more of these uh, virtual uh, lectures up there that you can use as kind of a uh, discussion starter or assignment starter so that you can get involved in um, uh, getting through this class and learning something all right good thanks a lot uh, let me know if you have any questions or problems, robdaywalt at me.com. Thank you.